Hello everyone and welcome to the second and last day of our online inter-university workshop 2020. The keynote speech of Commissioner Jose Cueto Jr. yesterday on COVID-19 pandemic and the landscape of implementing the UHC law and HPED, as well as the topics discussed by Drs. Erlene Sana, Maria Lourdes Dorothy Salvacion, Maria Elizabeth Grajeda, Iris Isipan, and Nemuel Pahutagana, my colleagues, have given you inputs and direction in accomplishing your workshop outputs in the afternoon. And to further guide you through, allow me to give you an overview of skills assessment. Assessment is a critical component in the attainment of the call of the World Health Organization for Transformative Education. In the context of the universal health care law and COVID-19, critical implementation of both in health professions education will lead to the realization of the vision that all health professionals should be educated to deliver patient-centered care as members of an interdisciplinary team emphasizing evidence-based practice, quality improvement approaches, and informatics. This lecture aims to help you analyze the difference between evaluation and assessment, and formative assessment and summative assessment, to examine the relevance of skills assessment in health professions education, especially in the context of the UHC law and COVID-19 pandemic, and to choose or decide on the skills assessment method or methods relevant to your context. Evaluation is defined as the determination of the worth of any educational phenomenon or product through a systematic, formal, and scientific collection, organization, and interpretation of data. This is done for systematic improvement of an educational product, cost-benefit analysis of a program, and appraised quality of programs, and hence it can serve as a final review to determine the quality of instruction. Assessment, on the other hand, is the collection of data and organizing them to measure how the learners have achieved the expected levels of competencies as a result of instruction. Evaluation is characterized as product-oriented, prescriptive, and judgmental, while assessment is characterized as process-oriented, reflective, and diagnostic. In other words, Evaluation judges the quality of learning while assessment increases the quality of learning. Scott Reeves, editor of the Journal of Interprofessional Care, further describes assessment as something that's done to determine the level of understanding by a learner and there needs to be a meaningful analysis of how the individual learns, not just in the short term but in the long term as well. In a video, Rethinking Assessment in Higher Education, Lisa Dabbs talks about the importance of assessing the learning outcomes of our 21st century learners by asking how much they have learned, not only based on their grades, but on how well they were involved in the learning process as well. She talks about engaging our students because they are the storytellers of their own learnings and experiences. The alignment between the rationale of assessment and the desired learning outcomes are crucial in understanding assessment. Here's a list of possible purposes of assessment in the context of health professions education. And these are to enhance learning, to ensure safety, to guide learning, to motivate learners, and to provide feedback. Corollary to the purposes of assessment identified by Norsini et al. are the goals of assessment mentioned by Epstein in his article, Assessment in Medical Education, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And these are first, to provide motivation and direction, to protect the public, to provide basis for choosing applicants. To make sure that the purposes and goals of assessment are executed, health professions educators must know these two equally important types of assessment by heart. And these are formative assessment or assessment for learning 
and summative assessment or summative of learning. Formative assessment or assessment for learning is used as a progressive guide for the learners in which reflection, feedback, shaping, and reassurance are keys. Feedback must be constructive, timely, and detailed, which requires commitment and resources on the part of the health professions educators. The increase in the learner's intrinsic motivation as well as his or her confidence and professional identity is the outcome of formative assessment. Summative assessment or assessment of learning is necessary for health professions educators to be able to fulfill their obligation to patients and society and that is to certify that students are competent to take the next steps toward becoming independently practicing health providers and professionals. To further guide health professions educators in determining the appropriate assessment that they give their learners, the following distinctions between formative assessment and summative assessment must be taken into consideration. The goal of formative assessment is to improve while it is to prove for summative assessment. In terms of purpose, formative assessment is to enhance learning while it is to judge learning for summative assessment. And in relation to instruction, formative assessment is done during instruction while it's after instruction for summative assessment. And formative assessment is done in a continuous basis while for summative assessment, it is done at a particular point in the teaching learning process. And as far as teacher's role is concerned, the teacher decides and monitors instruction based on the student's performance in formative assessment. While in summative assessment, he or she judges student's performance and result of which now becomes the basis of retention and learning. Competence in medicine is described as the habitual and judicious use of communication, knowledge, technical skills, clinical reasoning, emotions, values, and reflection in daily practice for the benefit of the individuals and communities being served. This implies that assessment of health professions learners covers many domains and is deeply complex. With the changing landscape of health professions education, specifically the universal health care law, COVID-19 pandemic, social accountability, the shift to competency-based and now outcomes-based education, learner assessment continues to evolve. Thus, health professions educators must be able to concretely identify what to assess in their learners to fully achieve the outcomes set for the professions. And the areas of assessment are the following. First, habits of mind and behavior. Second, application of knowledge and skills. Third, communication. Fourth, professionalism. Then we also have clinical reasoning and judgment in certain situations, teamwork, practice-based learning and improvement, and systems-based practice. Our discussion of assessment is focused on the assessment of the skills of our learners. Skills are well-organized and coordinated activity requiring manual manipulation of things, movement, or language. Therefore, when we talk about skills, we refer to first object motor, referring to the manipulation of an object, Second is language motor, referring to the communication skills or to communication skills. And third, feeling motor or the manner of communicating attitudes or feelings through movement. Concretely, the health professions educators must be able to identify desired outcomes, define levels or what they call milestones of expected competencies, and use an evaluation process to determine whether trainees or students represent the outcome that is desired when they graduate. Because of the complexity of the areas to be assessed among learners, 
health professions educators must be able to carefully choose and decide the appropriate assessment method to be able to achieve a particular desired learning outcome. The following methods are suggested. Written exercises comprising of multiple choice questions, key feature and script concordance, short answer questions, and structured essays. We also have assessment by supervising clinicians, referring to global ratings with comments at the end of the rotation or structured direct observation with checklists for ratings and oral examinations. For clinical simulations, no comprising of standardized patients and objective structured clinical examinations, incognito standardized patients, and simulations. And lastly, we have the multi-source or the 360 degree assessment, such as peer assessment, patient assessment, and self-assessment. It is also referring to portfolios, milestones, collaborative assessments, and social accountability. Now, numerous researches on the relevance of self-assessment as a formative assessment to ensure that learning outcomes are achieved have been conducted and these studies found out that self-assessment is rewarding, practicable, and may help learners to understand the gaps between their own performance and course standard. Warner and Palmer in 2018 suggest that self-assessment are helpful for developing key capabilities in students such as taking more responsibility for their own learning, developing a better understanding of the subject matter, assessment criteria and their own values and judgments, and developing critical reflection skills. As I earlier mentioned, there is a need to engage our learners or our students in the assessment process. And one way by which this can be done is through self-assessment. Brown and Harris define self-assessment as the descriptive and evaluative act carried out by the student concerning his or her own work and academic abilities. One of the videos that I would like you to watch uh, is uploaded in our materials online. It is entitled self-assessment. I hope that it will give you a clearer understanding of what self-assessment is. And it talks about the habits of mind by Arthur Costa and Ben Akali. And they are connected with self-assessment. These are thinking about thinking or metacognition, persistence, and open to continuous learning. Metacognition refers to the student's ability to be conscious about their thinking in a given situation and to evaluate the productiveness of their thinking skills. This is the time when they assess what they know and don't know so that they can identify their own baseline strategies or ways to improve their work. Persistence allows the students to analyze a problem and develop strategies to attack the problem. And though they may feel that their efforts are not good enough, giving them the opportunity to explore ways to solve a problem on their own will develop autonomy and determination in them. So remaining open to continuous learning leads the students to gain more confidence for metacognition, persistence, and curiosity to search for new and better ways to strive for improvement always growing, always learning, always modifying, and always improving to become lifelong learners. Self-assessment is also explained as a wide variety of mechanisms and techniques through which students describe or assess and possibly assign merit or worth or evaluate the qualities of their own learning processes and products. Self-assessment in the health sciences is described by Epstein as the ongoing moment-to-moment self-monitoring. And when we say self-monitoring, it refers to the ability to notice our own actions or your own actions, curiosity to examine the effects of those actions, and the willingness 
to use those observations to improve behavior and thinking in the future. Self-assessment encompasses assessment of the learner's competence, process, and product, and is subject to feedback from oneself as well. And since it is subject to feedback from oneself, it may be subjective and therefore have some set, uh, setbacks in terms of validity and reliability. Therefore, self-assessment requires careful design and implementation for it to be an effective tool for formative assessment processes. Andrade in 2019 proposed the following taxonomy in preparing self-assessment tools. The what, referring to competence, process, or product. The why, whether it is formative or summative assessment. And the how, pointing to the methods, including whether or not they include standards or criteria of self-assessment. In a recent research titled, Exploring the impact of assessment on medical students' learning, it revealed that the participants considered assessment as an avenue to quantify their level of knowledge and or competence. Furthermore, the students enjoy being assessed because they are a competitive bunch of perfectionists and achievers who strive for excellence. In the same study, it revealed that participants' observation on the emphasis given to summative assessment, which helped them meet the standards for clinical practice. Although they also acknowledge the value of formative assessment in addressing knowledge gaps and providing motivation for students, they felt that it was not given much emphasis as compared with summative assessments. This feedback substantiates one of the challenges to health professor, professions educators rather, to assume new rules and explore new approaches in educating future health professionals. As patients arrive with better and more information from the internet and increasingly insist that their desires, needs, and values be met, healthcare professionals will be called upon to modify their roles to include those of counselor, coach, and partner. Thus, the need for health professions educators to explore new methods of assessment, both formative and summative, so that health professionals, both those in academic settings and those already in practice, must be educated differently so that they can function as effectively as possible in a reformed healthcare system, one focused on enhancing quality and safety. As health professions educators, we are tasked to mold our learners as future health workers who shall, as the UHC law states, huh, become healthcare models who will provide all Filipinos access to comprehensive set of quality, cost-effective, promotive, preventive, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative health services, that which follows a whole system framework and people-oriented in approach towards the development of health resources who are competent in the provision of primary care services. Our methods of assessment should prepare our health professions learners to acquire the following skills and learning outcomes, clinical competence, communication skills, leadership and management skills, research or evidence-based practice, interprofessional or collaborative practice, systems-based approach, and self-directed learning. Assessing learners is undoubtedly a challenging task among health professions educators. Because first, they need to always keep the purposes and goals of assessment in health professions education in mind. Secondly, they need to carefully choose the types of assessment they will use, whether it is for learning or formative assessment or of learning or summative assessment. Third, health professions educators must be able to identify 
which specific area to assess. Is it behavior, skills, professionalism, communication, teamwork, practice-based, or systems-based learning? Fourth, align the method of assessment with the type of assessment and the specific area to be assessed so that the purposes and goals of assessment in health professions education be achieved. All our future health professionals, the learners that we have, health professions educators, are entrusted to move, are gifted with the cognitive, affective, psychomotor skills, and values that can be honed and developed into full use. That is, given the proper assessment approach. So, I hope that I was able to guide you through in your understanding of self-assessment and hopefully I was able to challenge you to be creative in designing your skills assessment tools that are relevant to the UHC law, the COVID-19 pandemic, and whatever challenges that will come in the future. This has been your lecturer, Dr. Emily D. Bicolen. And I would like to leave you with this reminder from Albert Einstein. Everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. <laughs>